So one of the most important factor of prognosis of lymphoma is what type of lymphoma. Among most of, among among lot of classifications, usually if it is cancer of the gut, we say it is stomach, we say it as stomach cancer. The same thing can't be applied in case of lymphoma, but because even, even though the cell has arised from white blood cells, it is so diversified that each one behaves in a very different way. The initial, the, some uh, 50 years ago or 60 years ago, the classification was very simple. Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma has a good prognosis. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma had a bad prognosis. How did they differentiate? They Because the at that time, the technology was having a light microscope where they can see reed Steinberg cells or they can't see reed Steinberg cells. The cells with reed Steinberg cells are called Hodgkin's lymphoma and cells without reed Steinberg cells are called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This was a very simple classification that was there some 50 years back. Over a period of time, the microscopes got involved. So that's the reason why it became, it became so confused. Classifications of lymphomas, clumsy. it is because the technology grew over a period of 50 years. So we were able to see better, like with a light microscope, we can, we just can see whether there are reed Steinberg cells or there are no reed Steinberg cells. Once a deeper, more powerful microscope has come in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or in those cancers where we can't see reed Steinberg cells, we could also identify different kinds of uh, variety of cancers like mantle cell, large V cell, small V cell, marginal cells and all those things. It's the reason why we have this kind of confusion regarding classifications of lymphoma. Later on, since 2016 and uh, post 2015, the classification was no more morphological based. It was more on the type of the cell that it's originates. So type of the cell means whether it is primitive, precursor B cells or peripheral B cells, precursor T cells or peripheral T cells. So whatever cell type that white blood cell was, whether it was precursor or peripheral, we say the cancer is that kind of. So if it is precursor, we say it's acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. Whether it is peripheral, there are again divisions. The most common one is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. It's the sixth most common cancer among all the cancers in the world, according to the epidemiological. So that's the reason I stress lightly on diffuse large B cell. Now, this is a simple diagram. I have taken it from Robin's textbook. So if you see here, uh, it also represents the journey of a lymphocytes. Lymphocytes originate in bone marrow and we need to know the functions of lymphocytes before understanding why there are so many types of cancer. See, what is the function of a lymphocyte? We, we always get confused that bacteria has infected the human being. No, in this world, the first organisms to evolve in this world were bacteria and viruses. We evolved later. It's not me that me, that typically means that this earth actually belongs to bacteria and viruses and we came in. It's not the opposite. It's not like we are getting infected with bacteria. We bacteria and viruses are already there and we came into that world. So when coming into that world as a primates or as more evolved human beings, we developed a system wherein we can fight against the bacteria and viruses that are present outside and inside the body. And in this bacteria, there are some bacteria which are useful to us. There are bacteria which are not useful to us also. So, so we evolved. So our immune system evolved in such a way that we will be able to recognize bacteria or viruses or any other pathogens which are useful to us or which are not useful to us and mount an immune response mount an immune response against those kind of bacteria and viruses. So in this, uh, in this process, it's a very complicated process because our DNA usually post birth, we call it as somatic DNA. It can't be changed so easily because it can't be changed. Suppose there are some millions of bacteria and viruses in the world and your DNA can't be changed, which is actually the coding material of our body that is not evolutionarily, it doesn't sync evolutionarily. So 
we had our dna had to modify or produce certain kinds of antibodies according to the pathogens that we encounter to solve this evolutionary hurdle we have evolved into some methods called based upon the bacteria based upon the virus that we see our dna can be changed so there will be somatic mutations that are possible in white blood cells these are particularly possible only in white blood cells not in any other cells this mechanism is a two edged sword because along with enabling us to fight against external pathogens and cancers immunity also is responsible for cancers it also because of the unstable dna that is caused during change of encountering to different kind of antigens we also are became more these cells have become more susceptible for aberrant mutations and as we know aberrant mutations are the starting point of malignancies or, or cancers in white blood cells especially in lymphoma so this part is very important it's also this part helps you to understand to answer all your mcq questions that two parts somatic hypermutations and antigen antibody class switching which are root causes for increased incidence of malignancies or increased wbc cancers in this kind of population then comes so this uh, this it's a lymphocytes we are just describing the anatomy of a lymphocyte so it will have a marginal zone it will have a germinal center germinal center is again divided into dark zone and light zone the why these things are relevant i will be just discussing over a period of time so these are different uh, lymphocytes different malignancies especially b malignancies burkitt's lymphoma diffuse large b cell lymphoma extranodal marginal zone lymphoma follicular lymphoma hairy cell leukemia mantle cell lymphoma uh, multiple myeloma usually we discuss it as a separate thing but it is a b cell proliferation and small lymphocytic lymphoma uh, the reason why there are different type of cancer is there are different kind of genetic mutations occurring in each type of cancer why those genetic mutations happen and what is the reason for genetic mutations and how they affect the prognosis we will i'll have a small discussion i felt that this particular discussion is very important especially uh, especially for people who are preparing for uh, exam because this forms the basis of most of the mcq questions if you understand all this major concepts you can remember mcq questions in a easier way then comes what is b cell develop how does a b cell develop so first what does they what does they do they assemble the immunoglobulin heavy chains the antibodies immunoglobulin heavy chain with some process called vdj recombination once they form this one they get exposed to antigen so the when it is positively reacting to the antigen the cell proliferates the cell which has which has undergone vdj recombinations if it is not reacting or it is reacting in a way that it affects our immune system which may lead to autoimmune disease it gets apoptosis this mechanism is done with the help of certain gene for first and gene called Uh, rad one and rad two genes which are present in the initial part which can modify our dna in the way that we want so from precursor it becomes pro b cells from there it becomes pre b cell and then an immature b cells then finally it will become some mature cells and you will often see in pathology reports or any of on your relatives who got got affected with there will be a lot of marker cd34 positive cd20 positive cd19 positive what are these markers these markers represent the stage of the cancer development so if we know at what stage that particular neoplastic cell is we can categorize that this is this particular type of cancer with this introduction we also have a small introduction about germinal cells germinal center is something that is present in the lymphocytes it has two zones a dark zone and light zones what happens in a dark zone b cells modify the variable region of igg by the process of somatic hypermutation in light zones these modified uh, b cells get exposed to antigens and then they get refined they get more and more refined 
so the cells that are present in dark zone are called centroblast the cells are that are present in light zone for centrocytes so in dark zone they modify their uh, they modify their genes with the help of somatic hypertensions it's like you get they get they get taught in dark zone and they practice in the light zone in the light zone they just again get encountered with uh, antigens that are presented by cd4 cells and follicle follicular dendritic cells uh, then again once they get exposed they they, they just, it doesn't just stop there they can be further fine tuned then they get they send it again back to the light zone where it will be mutated a little bit more so the cells which are more specific to that particular antigens are selected and it will be remembered in the form of uh, it will it will be transformed into a plasma cell or a b cell where which whose necessity is not there at present but when the antigen or parasite comes back again it will be easier to produce antibodies and all those things why why do we have such a regulated mechanism uh, regarding antibodies and thing is that whenever an immune response is mounted it is a very it's like a double edged sword it can also cause enough harm to the body so our immune system is tuned in such a way that we just don't respond to everything we just respond to the thing which is harmful to the body and which causes damage to the body so with this background we will be we will be very specific our immune system has developed into a very specific part where we develop those kind of immune cells which only react to that particular pathogen and doesn't have a generalized immune response the problem with generalized immune response will be seen in hypersensitivity where it will mount such a bad immune response that major cause of damage to our body would be the immune response rather than the disease